by secret executive memorandum, NSC 5511 in 1954, President Eisenhower had commissioned the study group to examine all the facts, evidence, lies, and deception, and to discover the truth of the alien question. A major finding of the alien study was that the public could not be told. It was believed that this would most certainly lead to economic collapse, collapse of the religious structure, and national panic, which could lead into anarchy. Secrecy thus continued. An offshoot of this finding was that if the public could not be told, Congress could not be told. Funding for the projects and research would have to come from outside the government. In the meantime, money was to be obtained from the military budget and from Central Intelligence Agency confidential, non-appropriated funds. Another major finding was that the aliens were using humans and animals for a source of glandular secretions, enzymes, hormonal secretions, blood plasma, and possibly in genetic experiments. The aliens explained these actions as necessary to their survival. They stated that their genetic structure had deteriorated and that they were no longer able to reproduce. They stated that if they were unable to improve their genetic structure, their race would soon cease to exist. We looked upon their explanations with extreme suspicion. Since our weapons were literally useless against the aliens, Majesty 12 decided to continue friendly diplomatic relations until such time as we were able to develop a technology which would enable us to challenge them on a military basis. Overtures would have to be made to the Soviet Union and other nations to join forces for the survival of humanity. A symposium was held in 1957, which was attended by some of the great scientific minds then living. They reached the conclusion that by or shortly after the year 2000, the planet would self-destruct due to increased population and man's exploitation of the environment without any help from God or the aliens. By secret executive order of President Eisenhower, the Jason scholars were ordered to study this scenario and make recommendations from their findings. The Jason Society confirmed the findings of the scientists and made three recommendations called Alternatives 1, 2, and 3. Alternative 1 was to use nuclear devices to blast holes in the stratosphere from which the heat and pollution could escape into space. They would then change the human cultures from that of exploitation into cultures of environmental protection. Of the three, this was decided to be the least likely to succeed due to the inherent nature of man and the additional damage the nuclear explosions would themselves create. The existence of a hole in the ozone layer may indicate that Alternative 1 might have been attempted. This is, however, only conjecture. Alternative 2 was to build a vast network of underground cities and tunnels in which a select representation of all cultures and occupations could survive and carry on the human race. The rest of humanity would be left to fend for themselves on the surface of the planet. We know that these facilities have been built and are ready and waiting for the chosen few to be notified. Alternative three was to exploit the alien and conventional technology in order for a select few to leave the Earth and establish colonies in outer space. I am not able to either confirm or deny the existence of batch consignments of human slaves, which would be used for the manual labor as a part of the plan. The moon, codenamed Adam, was the object of primary interest, followed by the planet Mars, codenamed Eve. I am now in possession of official NASA photographs of one of the moon bases. I believe that the Mars colony is also a reality. As a delaying action, all three alternatives included birth control, sterilization, and the introduction of deadly microbes to control or slow the growth of the Earth's population. AIDS is only one result of these plans. It was decided by the elite that since the population must be reduced and controlled, 
It would be in the best interest of the human race to rid ourselves of the undesirable elements of our society. Specific targeted populations included blacks, Hispanics, and homosexuals. The joint United States and Soviet leadership dismissed Alternative 1, but ordered work to begin on Alternatives 2 and 3 virtually at the same time. In 1959, the RAND Corporation hosted a deep underground construction symposium. In the symposium report, machines are pictured and described which could bore a tunnel 45 feet in diameter at the rate of 5 feet per hour in 1959. It also displays pictures of huge tunnels and underground vaults containing what appear to be complex facilities and possibly even cities. It appears that the previous five years of all-out underground construction had made significant progress by that time. The official space program was boosted by President Kennedy in his inaugural address when he mandated that the United States put a man on the moon before the end of the decade. Although innocent in its conception, this mandate enabled those in charge to funnel vast amounts of money into black projects and conceal the real space program from the American people. A similar program in the Soviet Union served the same purpose. In fact, a joint alien United States and Soviet Union base existed on the moon at the very moment Kennedy spoke the words. During the United States' initial space exploration and the moon landings, every launch was accompanied by alien craft. On November 20th, 1990, Los Angeles TV Channel 2 announced that a separate red, glowing, round-shaped object accompanied the space shuttle Atlantis on its latest classified military mission. That was the first public admission. A moon base, Luna, was photographed by the lunar orbiter and filmed by the Apollo astronauts. Domes, spires, tall, round structures which look like silos, huge T-shaped mining vehicles that left stitch-like tracks in the lunar surface, and extremely large, as well as small alien craft, appear in the official NASA photographs. It is a joint United States and Soviet base. The space program is a farce and an unbelievable waste of money. Alternative 3 is a reality. It is not science fiction. Since our interaction with the aliens began, we have come into possession of technology beyond our wildest dreams. We currently have, and fly, atomic-powered anti-gravity type craft in Nevada. Our pilots have made interplanetary voyages in these craft and have been to the moon, Mars, and other planets. We have been lied to about the true nature of the moon, the planets, Mars and Venus, and the real state of technology that we possess today at this very moment. There are areas on the moon where plant life grows and even changes color with the season. This seasonal effect is because the moon does not, as claimed, always present the exact same side to the earth or the sun. The moon has several man-made lakes and ponds upon its surface, and clouds have been observed and filmed in its atmosphere. It possesses a gravitational field, and man can walk upon its surface without a spacesuit, breathing from an oxygen bottle after undergoing decompression, the same as any deep-sea diver. I have the official NASA photographs. Some of them were published in the books, We Discovered Alien Bases on the Moon, by Fred Steckling, and Someone Else is on the Moon. In 1969, a confrontation broke out between the Soviets and Americans at the lunar base. The Soviets attempted to take control of the base and held American scientists and personnel hostage. We were able to restore order, but not before 66 people were killed. The Soviets were suspended from the program for a period of two years. A reconciliation eventually took place, and once again we began to interact. Another plan is in force. It is the plan to prepare the public for eventual confrontation with an alien race. It could also intend to make you believe in an alien race that may not exist.